It is 611 and I call this meeting to order. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Villarreal. Erasmo Villarreal. Roberto Luis. Fred Villarreal. I'm Minnie Dora Haynes. The first item on the agenda is a discussion and possible action to amend the UISD Advisory Bond Oversight Committee guideline, operating guidelines. Remember, I brought this forth at the last mm -hmm. meeting that in the absence of the chair, uh, we needed to be able to call the committee to order. And it was, th in the discussions, uh, the committee felt that it would be a good idea to have any member of the committee be able to call the meeting to order, because if we did a vice chair, we'd probably be in the same boat. And uh, so the revision reads, the chairperson shall be the presiding officer at each committee meeting. If the chairperson is absent from a committee meeting and a quorum is present, any committee member may make a motion to nominate a presiding officer for that committee meeting in which the chairperson is absent. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we accept this uh, change. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? All right. All those All right. opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. <coughs> Second item on the agenda is discussion and possible action to approve guaranteed maximum price for Orange Elementary Classroom Wing and parking lot additions. Okay. Mr. Good evening, Madam <laughs> Chairman and uh, committee members and audience members of the audience. I'm here to present the um, recommendation to award the GMP proposal for the additions and improvements at Orange Elementary to Landerker Construction in the amount of $2,889,835. It does include a contingency allowance of $100,000. If you'd like to see the, uh, the scope of the work. It is to add 30 parking spaces. We're going to add 15 classrooms, one science classroom, redesign the playground, parking lot drainage improvements, a portable classroom relocation, at student restrooms and staff restrooms. As you look at the, uh, at the presentation, you see um, the overall site plan showing the existing building and the color coded areas is where the addition is to, uh, is to happen. And this is a, a larger view of the actual spaces showing all the classrooms and uh, where we're gonna fill in that void that was designed for a future classroom wing, and we're adding two, four classrooms at the end of the existing wings. And that's just more detail showing the actual layout of the classrooms and what goes in it. And these are, again, the ones that are at the end of the existing classroom wing and a uh, and a view of a typical classroom with the, with the uh, furniture layout and uh, all the millwork and equipment that it consists of. And this is a view of the restrooms for student and staff. And the last slide is the uh, is a view of the elevations, which uh, again we're going to try to match as closely as we can the existing materials and colors to this campus. Any questions on this project? Well, the GMP is within budget, correct? That is correct. Yes. <coughs> and we have included uh, <coughs> cultural work, the uh, relocation of some portable buildings yes, uh, that are currently in place. There's four buildings that will have to be relocated. Uh, Chair, I make a motion that uh, we accept this. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Alanis. Thank you. The uh, second project we're bringing uh, to you for recommendation is the award the GMP proposal for the Food Production Center, addition to Landecker Construction in the amount of $802,175.96. There is no contingency allowance in this figure. That's within the budget. Also. But it is within the budget, yes. <coughs> On this one, what I'd like to explain is 
If you see the guaranteed maximum price, you have a, a section up on top that's $287,483.96. That will be paid out of bond funds at this point. The remaining amount of 514,692 are going to be paid out of fund out of food uh, food service program fund balance. And basically, that's going to be equipment to 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 equip this this expansion. So, out of bond funds, it's really only 287,043 that we're asking the committee to approve. Which is uh, basically the entire building. The 287,000 is the structure, the foundation, brick and mortar, more brick and mortar, everything that's permanent. Mm -hmm. And the freezer equipment or the cold storage equipment? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Texas Department of Agriculture allows us to install equipment that's removable and, and, and transportable to other locations if we ever had to. So this equipment is considered that, so it's an allowable expenditure under the Texas Department of Agriculture. So the 500000 is, is from where? The fund balance from the Food, food, uh, food Service Department, Food Service Fund, I should say. Okay. They have a fund balance, basically retained earnings. And that's from the state, or is that? No, that's out, that's from operations. Operations. Continuing operations over over the last few years, so it kind of builds up a fund balance like the general fund has, and so we're going to take it out of there to go ahead and fund the equipment. May I ask why is there no contingency allowance? Why sometimes yes and sometimes no? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, one of the reasons is since this is basically the an expansion of an exist of a uh, cold storage room or large building that is we currently have a cold storage a, a freezer unit and we're just removing <coughs> one section of the end wall and expanding it it's a very simple project basically it's within the uh, property there's really no unforeseen uh, events that are expected I mean, it's a very simple so you're knocking a wall and going out Correct. Actually, we're not even knocking the whole wall, just opening a door, pass through, mm -hmm. and it's just be an extension of an existing uh, uh, walking cooler, freezer. So basically it's a slab that you're putting in. It's a slab. Well, we're yeah. building the enclosure, the, the building, yeah. but it's yeah. prefabricated uh, panels that are uh, insulated panels. Insulated it's a walk-in refrigeration unit. And uh, the only thing coming from the budget is the 287000 That's correct. Mm -hmm. and right. that's, that's basically construction. It's a, it's a small small amount for construction purposes, so we didn't feel a contingency was necessary at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I make a motion that we probably accept this, please. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Discussion on possible action to approve a guaranteed maximum pro no, the rescission of board action on February 18th. For <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. It disappeared. Discussion and possible action to approve the rescission of board action on February 18, 2015, with respect to Section 4, RFP 2014-109, Network Equipment for Eight District Campuses. Good evening, um, Madam Chair and Committee. Um, we brought before you in the February um, bond oversight meeting and to the February board meeting this RFP. One section of the RFP, after awarding it to the vendor, sending award notifications, et cetera, it came to light that they made a mistake on that section. Um, therefore, we're going to reject that section of the RFP and resolicit just that portion. Everything else would stay the same. And this is the UPSs for the eight schools. We brought it back to the committee because you know, we brought it forward before you all approved it and then we took it to the board so we felt it ne necessary to come back and say we're rescinding that section and resolicit. Okay. Which section was it? Section 4 which is the UPSs. What was the total amount budgeted for that? I'll give it to you right now. Um, the bid was 70,000. I don't have it in front of me. I mean, it was 70,000, but it was off by another 70. It was like half of the amount, and the vendor cannot um, honor it, but it was their mistake. Um, they did provide unit costs, but at this point, we feel that the price difference is over 100%, over 50%, so there's really no way that we can just come back with a change. We'd rather just re-quote it because it is a substantial difference. I believe it was 72 UPSs that we needed, and their price was only 12, so it was over 100% increase in the budget. And what was the total RFP amount that was approved? Um, uh, about 2.2. 2. 2. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a small section. It's like seventy thousand of the two point two million. So 
So but the whole RFP went out as one complete package, right? We awarded it by section, yes, sir. Oh, by section. We awarded it by section. We've done, we've done that. Okay. So then no, you're fine. recommending that we rescind this and then you'll bring it back to us at a later date. Correct. And that's we're correct. only rescinding section four oh, okay. of the entire RFP. Okay. Okay. Thank you. May I have a motion? So moved. May I have a second? Second. The motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. <clears throat> Discussion and possible action to approve RFP 2014-114 interactive flat panels for new elementary school and pilot of existing schools. We recommend the award go to ACES Consulting at the amount of $711,682.36. This is for 130, well actually 126 interactive boards and four uh, display boards. Um, the part of the boards are going to the new school Exactly um, 60, 60 interactive boards and four uh, panels are going to the new school. The remaining um, 66 boards are going to, um, plus 69 boards are going to some of our existing schools. And they're going to um, our focus schools, one elementary, one middle, one high, and then the library of three of our focus elementary schools. Just as a reminder, the line item that, that this is, is being funded out of is that $8 million of technology that was approved in the, in the bond election. So the service agreement is part of the money. Yes, the five-year service agreement is part of the total amount. It also includes the installation and the training for the, for the interactive flat panels. It's a turnkey price. Seven hundred eleven six eighty two point thirty six. Coming out of that eight million. That's correct. Well, part of it is. Well, part of it is. Part, the of other it is part is going out of the elementary school construction budget. budget. What percentage is that? The um, sixty four boards. How much is that go to? Um, it's what's well, it's because it's broken down. We had to like. Put it all together. You can just divide the total by 130 and then multiply by 64. We grouped them together to save on the, the freight. If we were to separate them out, we're shipping them to one location. Approximately half, about 350,000. That's going to be coming out of the, the uh, construction. construction budget for the new school. Those 60 are going okay. into the new school. And then the other ones are coming out of the, the $8 million. Yes. Okay. Um, Cordy, I see you have a committee. Yes. Uh, Judy and Lene and different uh, others, they, how did this come about? The, I see where they also. They also ranked the, each of the proposals. Mm -hmm. So um, what we did is we went out on proposals and um, we had, I think it was nine proposals submitted. A preliminary um, committee made up of Judy and her staff and technology we um, brought that down to a manageable amount because we brought teachers out to come and evaluate each of the boards. The vendors came down, they brought their board, the committee had an opportunity to play with the board, um, hear a presentation on it. Uh, at the end of that day, they still were not sure because there was a, a little bit of a price difference between the low bid and the bid they recommended. So we came back with additional questions and the committee came back to um, evaluate them. So it was a group of uh, teachers, uh, instructional technology, and technology that evaluated the um, boards. You had four bidders? No, we had nine. We had nine? just had four that proposed, or that okay. four that were able to present. We narrowed the nine down to four, four before we brought the committee in. I'm sorry, 11, not nine, 11. And uh, the five-year warranty, is that usually pretty good warranty on that? 
Yes, and what we did is, in addition to that, you'll see that there's an, an additional $83 charge, and what that is is the warranty is with the manufacturer, but the vendor is charging an additional $83 for the board, and what that is is we don't have to wait to send it back to the manufacturer when there's an issue. We can contact the vendor directly, and we've dealt with that vendor in the past. They'll come back, do a board replacement, and they'll take care of everything for us, so we don't have to worry about mm -hmm. unmounting it, shipping it back, and the committee felt that that was uh, very important. Yeah. Well, it sounds like What is the major difference between the low bidder and the bidder that is being proposed? It was more on the functionality of the board. It was um, the software and the functionality. It, the, it was easier to use the board that they're recommending. They wanted a multi-touch board. They wanted the teacher to have to do the least amount of steps to <coughs> have the board uh, perform the functions. For example, uh, to erase what's on the board, when the board that was a low bid, you had to select an option, then click an eraser, and then erase it. The board that they selected, they could just swipe their hand through as if it was an erasing function like you would do on a regular whiteboard, and it automatically did that. In addition to that, it had some additional instructional features where um, I know they've done like uh, pre, um, pre-instructed lessons like on how to dissect a frog, et cetera. Um, maps of the world and you know just different functions that the committee felt that the price was definitely worth it like what we see on tv whether <laughs> and everything happens yes <laughs> okay. okay we have a motion is there a second second the motion is second all those in favor Aye. any opposed thank you motion carries next we have um, discussion possible action to approve the purchasing of furnishings and equipment for the new elementary school on a periodic basis okay what we're bringing before you is to furnish a new once the the construction phase begins purchasing um, gets the whole the plans and specifications of the new elementary school and goes room by room to decide what um, goes in each room and we we bid that stuff out in addition to just your traditional desks chairs stools um, we have, you know, refrigerators, washer dryers, um, a lot of different components that we are doing an RFP that we'll bring before you for the traditional student furniture and the administrative furniture, but there are also a lot of little line items that we're just going to get from our already approved vendors. An example would be our Kronos clocks. Another example would be our copiers. Um, so instead of bringing each and every purchase, as you can see, the list is, um, you know, substantial, we thought that maybe we could just get an approval to move forward. We'll bring um, the, the same spreadsheet, we'll add a column for the price, the vendor, the procurement method, et cetera, so you can see as it's going, but we don't want to have to wait to bring it to the committee before we make the purchases. Yeah, what that list, what that list contains is all the furniture, the furniture and, and equipment that goes into, into a new campus. And it, it's gonna, and it indicates where the, fund, where the funding source is, you know, bond or campus allocation, startup, so on. But there's so many things that we need to order on a continuing, continuing basis that we'd like to go ahead and move forward and, and, and purchase the items from our approved vendors and then come back to the committee and let you know who we purchased them from and for how much. But rather than having to wait until our meeting every month, we, we kind of need to keep moving and moving and moving. So we'd like, we'd like to present this and ask for your approval for us to go ahead and just move forward with purchases from our, and they're all approved vendors, by the way. And we've already gone out for solicitations and stuff, so there are approved vendors. It, it is very extensive, so I think definitely we have to to be able to go on, on a monthly basis with who we are, the more you buy from. I have a question. Uh, this is what I get. Floors that teach? It's a rug. That's really all it is. <laughs> it's a rug. <laughs> on page 9 of 15, floors that teach. <laughs> That's what they call them. It's basically an educational rug. <laughs> you know, my wife would know what that is. But I... <laughs> it's a pretty intense uh, operation if you think about it. Uh, Corey's office does a fantastic job yeah. of making sure every single detail is set. Um, if you ever do have the opportunity when the school's about to open, just go by and look at the chaotic mess that happens. But when school starts, that first day, everything's there. And if you can just imagine every single little trinket that has to be in every classroom, it's just an amazing thing. And we kind of broke it down by areas, like what's in the general building, what's, in, what's for technology, what goes in, in each classroom, the softwares, what goes in administration, the teacher workrooms, et cetera, um, the nurse's station, the library, and 
Um, like I said, we will be bringing next month the furniture um, bid for your approval. But we did, and that one we will get approval prior to placing the purchase order. But there's a lot, and, and we're also going to bring the computers um, for the lease, I think. Um, but there are a lot of little things in there, like the bookends, um, pencil sharpeners, flags, that we don't want to have to wait to make those purchases. Right. On this extensive list, do you have a dollar amount? We have an estimated budget of about um, 2.3 million between all the budgets. That includes furniture and equipment, um, the cafeteria tables. Motion to approve. The second. Motion to approve the purchasing. The, the second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Um, now, current bond status report, please. Nachis. Okay, I'll be reporting on uh, the first project would be the new elementary school, elementary school 27. And the project summary is that the construction progress to date is at 61%. Time extension remains at 45 days and uh, the, com the completion date September 6th. Though we, we, we do anticipate maybe uh, a little more time due to the uh, extensive rain that we have had lately. It's been a very wet year, if you all know. So um, it has delayed <coughs> some of the major site work, you know, components and areas to this job. But the contractor continues to plug away at the building and the interior of the building as much as he can. So um, I'm going to go over uh, the sections maybe re relate to the, uh, the legend of the, of the building, which is on the bottom the bottom uh, corner of your report. The uh, A and B sections, which is the uh, classroom, and uh, B is uh, the, li the library area. The installation of the finished materials is ongoing, principally the installation of ceramic tile in the restrooms. The finished substrates are being installed, such as metal stud framing and suspended channels for the drip board ceilings and the fur downs. The overhead on mechanical, electrical, and plumbing Areas in the sheet metal duct work has been completed, including the duct installation. The HVAC refrigerant lines have been installed and insulated as well. The roofing and the insulation is being completed, and the openings have been closed with the window frames and glazing. That's seen in the first side or the first half of the building. Over in area C, which, is, which leads to the cafeteria, the placement of the interior and exterior ceiling walls have been completed 100%. Installation of the exterior damp proofing in the rigid insulation board and brick masonry is ongoing. The overhead mechanical, electrical, and plumbing area of sheet metal duct work is being installed. And uh, the HVAC refrigerant lines have been installed and insulated. Roofing and insulation is being installed as well. And uh, the contractors completed the construction of all CMU walls. Plumbing contractors installing laboratory wall carriers and continuing with above ground plumbing lines. That's in the uh, student restrooms and any plumbing area. Now the final uh, zone of the map is uh, zone D, which is the, uh, the gymnasium area. That one, uh, the placement of the interior and exterior seam walls have been completed to about 80%. And the contractor is in the process of installing the HVAC ductwork, which is uh, an exposed uh, installation type system. And uh, the final area is a courtyard, which which is the center part, and the masonry construction is ongoing with the exterior brickwork <coughs> as well. Now there's a few photos, progress uh, photos, that, uh, that are shown here, identifying the, uh, the work in progress, starting with uh, you know, installing finishes on the restroom walls. We have the CMU partitions completed in finished heights. See some of that metal stud work for the ceiling, for the ceiling tile, or ceiling grid. We have more, more, uh, more, more views of the metal stud framing, which is above, um, down the corridors. See a view of the cable tray and the ductwork. The cable tray is for all the, um, the data, data wiring that, that goes concealed above the ceiling. Uh, view of the reading room in the library. Uh, the HVC contract completed the ductwork and the, the barrier ins installation. It's more, uh, more library views showing the fur down kind of shows the picture of what the ceiling will look like once it's finished. We have a 
view of the south wall of the library. We have a view of the courtyard, as I mentioned earlier, where the brick uh, is being finalized. And uh, you see some of the uh, exterior wall, you know, insulation board being applied as well. Then we got some views of the uh, gymnasium wall, which is uh, the last section that's being worked on right now. It's more of a big open space, so uh, that's the space they're at now. And then I have some views showing the exterior uh, or the site of the uh, of the project, which uh, more fine grading is is is, uh, is ongoing. And again, uh, it's been a little difficult to access and work because of the weather. But, you know, as soon as it dries up, it seems like it just rains again, and it's it's just you know been a constant challenge. But uh, you can see how uh, how they've done most of the grading. Are there any questions on the first school, the first project? This is all number 27? Yes, sir. The, the amount of work that uh, Line Decker is doing on this job, are, I see that his work is satisfactory, but are you pretty happy with the work that's been done? Yes, and um, what, or to help ensure that, the, um, that it's being done according to code, to code and uh, in compliance with the specs and the documents, our consultants have been visiting the sites and, and are providing reports as well of, uh, of their area. We have the architects going on doing their cursory, you know, uh, observations and, supply and providing a report. We have the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers doing their their inspections. So all all consultants are responsible for for viewing and, and ensuring that uh, the building is being built according to specs. Okay. You, uh, your construction progress today. How are you coming out with that one? Is it the construction schedule or the... You no, know, that's basically the work that's in place and installed, materials installed. Should we go on to the next project? Yeah. It looks like you have a question. Well, you know, we, we're about five months away, which I think would be the first day of school. Uh, so we're on track for that? Well, we are a little, like I said, uh, the, the percentage should show a little bit more. But because of the uh, the delays, the delays, yes, it's 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 been affected. I mean, it's just uh, <coughs> yeah, that's been pretty so much throughout the city. The completion date is about November. Well, yeah. you know, those are dates that we we're going to have to I mean, look at. We're going to have to because you're right. I mean, the weather's going to continue doing what it's been doing. Just like this week, and that's going to keep. Right. I mean, this one is a little bit better because you're way ahead. You know, anytime your walls are up and your roof is up. Yeah. You can work inside, but the other ones that have yeah. site work and everything else, that's where your major problems would come in. This one will just hold you up in your parking lots and yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, only because when we, we started this and we hit the ground running on this, you know, and uh, this is the only one he was working on for this yeah. time. But if you remember back then, even still, uh, when they were just starting getting ready to pour, it, was, yeah, it, it was started a, raining, it you know, hour, and uh, it's been a constant, just, our, yeah. It was a rainy winter. It's mm -hmm. just been a yeah. constant. Rainy winter. <laughs> when does school start? August 24th. So, it's going to be tight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were about 45 days out. Right. What's the contingency? If this, this particular school's not ready, what's... what's we're we're probably going to have to meet because now it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. So it doesn't look to me like you're going to be able to make it. It's going to be very tough. Yeah. It's going to be very I tough. Mean, it doesn't look like mm -hmm. it based on what people like, like that. <laughs> no, they still have to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of, I guess, transferring kids uh, or from whatever. Coming up with a to. plan. Uh, if, if the opening of the school is delayed, we're going to have to have some sort of plan, either you know, set them aside in portable somewhere and get, get them ready to transfer as soon as the building's ready to occupy. Or we're not sure, and that's really yeah. best left up to instruction and stuff, okay. and us, of course, because we have to move them. But we have to come up with a plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The kids are identified. We already know who they are. with parents and we've met with them, so they know they're moving. Yeah. Right. So even if it means that maybe a month later they leave on a Friday from one school and on Monday they show up for their new school, that may happen also. All right. So, yeah. We move on. Okay. The next project uh, to report is a United Ninth Grade project. And this one's moving a little. A little slower, but it is at 5% completion. To date, there have not been any days requested for extension. And the contractual date, uh, completion date remains at December 10, 2016. Now, uh, that site is relatively flat, as the pictures were shown a while, but um, 
the geotechnical engineers have been on site uh, reporting the uh, soil testing and uh, earthwork is, uh, is, is ongoing. And the uh, final the final site uh, that we have to present tonight is the United South ninth grade project. And uh, that one is approximately 8% complete. Uh, no dates have been uh, requested for extension and completion date remains at July 15, 2016. The, um, the work that we'll see in the photos and uh, the description of, uh, of what's, what's in progress is a section C, which is one of the classroom wings is uh, the, the rebar preparation and the foundation is at around 90% completion. The plumbing roughing is at 90% completion and the forming and foundation prep is, is for pouring is at 90% completion. Uh, areas D and E, which are also classroom uh, areas, uh, the trenching of the uh, pad is ongoing. And uh, in all the other areas, we have a uh, site work underway. And uh, this is another example of uh, just the unfortunate, um, you know, uh, I guess weather we've been having. But this site, as you see, it was uh, was scheduled to be poured uh, this past Friday, but because of the uh, the risk of rain, it uh, it was held back, and you know it, it did end up raining, you know, most of Saturday. So uh, right now it's in the process of drying out, and it'll probably take a few days before they get back. Yeah, right, right when it dries up, it'll probably rain again. And there is rain in the forecast, yes. Yeah. Thursday, I think, is 80%. Yeah, it is. Now, they do uh, prepare on these trenches while they're working this, these, uh, these pads. They do uh, prepare or leave like an out for, for the water not to, uh, for the water to drain out. So that helps in, uh, in helping it dry out. And those are just more pictures of the form and, and the site work. Pictures of chapels. <laughs> Excuse me? No pictures of chapels. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. I would have been today. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Okay. All right, any questions on the, on the final? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, the current bond project status report. Light, Mrs. Davides. Good evening. Members of the committee, uh, we're bringing to you the Bond Oversight Committee report as of March 25th. Um, what you'll see here, and I like to focus on the summary because it is a lot of numbers, but you'll see where we haven't had too much movement in the schools, but next time you'll probably see in the Highway 359 East Middle School Elementary that y'all uh, approved the GMP last month. Uh, they're working out the, the contract deal. And so it'll become a purchase order. So you'll see, I think it was about $19 million added to that line item. And then the Highway 359 East Elementary School GMP also was awarded last month. And so you'll see that eventually hit that line item and that was about $14.3 million. Again, also uh, the technology and the $8 million, um, Tonight, y'all approved using some of that money for those interactive flat panels for existing schools. And so next month, as, as the order gets placed, you'll see an amount encumbered, which I think it's gonna be about $360,000 or so. For about 66, yes. So I think in, in explaining about the interactive flat panels, um, we decided rather than take a risk and picking one vendor to do $8 million worth and not know if it was gonna work. I think this pilot project we'll look at carefully. Uh, of course, it'll be in every classroom in the new school, but we'll see how it, how it works in a high school setting, in a middle school setting, and the other elementary. So I think we're gonna learn a lot from this pilot project. Also, how those librarians will check out an interactive flat panel on a, on a cart, you know, how that's gonna work as well. So we hope to get a lot of information from this pilot project so that maybe uh, as we're going, maybe by, I would say maybe by next November or December, we'll know if this is the type of model we wanna use and start expanding that, you know, 
where we're going to go to more campuses because they're waiting. They're waiting for these items. So uh, we'll we'll be revisiting these these uh, these panels and their usage. And then probably the only item that really changed that much from last month was the infrastructure upgrade, where I believe we, we went ahead and put some purchase orders in, uh, where it jumped from about 4.47% to 34.7%. Uh, so I think technology's on its way in upgrading some of our existing campuses that never would get E-rate funds. So uh, I know that and his staff are already working on that. And everything else kind of stayed pretty uh, status quo. And they're still designing the uh, the uh, building access control and the upgrade to security surveillance cameras and so on. They're, we're working on those right now. We just haven't issued any kind of contract or anything yet. So, but they're working on their design. And then in the renovation and addition areas, we are working like tonight. Y'all uh, went ahead and approved Arndt Elementary and Troutman. Oh, the food production. So you'll start seeing more contracts hit in purchase orders and and. You know, it's going to start happening really fast that these monies are going to be used really fast. We are working on what we're calling uh, phase two. Uh, we're trying to do a cash flow projection based on Mr. Rangel and Leindecker's construction schedule. Uh, initially, we thought we were going to go this summer and issue 100 mi $125 million in bonds. But the schedules that I've been seeing from uh, Mr. Rangel and how we've been awarding, uh, we might not have to issue 125 million. It's looking more like 100 or even 75 million. We don't want the clock to start ticking on that debt, so we don't need that much cash on hand. Where we wouldn't make the interest income. I mean, it's zero point maybe two percent in some cases. So we're really looking at that carefully. But staff will be meeting on that. And then we'll come to you with a projection of maybe either later on in the summer we would issue so much in bonds, or maybe we could even delay, but I don't know if we can. So I need to meet with these gentlemen. And maybe if it keeps on raining, we can. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, but that would help. But anyway, uh, so we'll be bringing that financial aid to you as, as we're getting it together. But we know we don't want to delay. We need, we need the room. Anyway, I don't know if anybody has any questions. And again, the, the detail uh, is behind the summary page. It ties to the, to the summary page. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is informational item on rejection of CSP 012-2015 construction of main security stations at various campuses. Cordy? We're bringing before you the rejection of this um, CSP. We went out for um, CSP proposals. We received them, but um, they were way over the budget. If you look at the second page, you see the tabulation of the two vendors that submitted a response. You're looking at ACDC at $412,000 and Line Decker at $618,000 when our budget was $294,000. So the uh, architects are going to go back and redesign. Once the, re once the new design is um, done, then we will go out for another CSP. Yeah, we're, we're bringing this to you. We haven't awarded anything. We haven't done anything. But we did come to you some time back with the design of the security stations. Yes. Yes. And that would have been great, except when we put them out for proposals, they're way above our budget. And so we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and redesign, see what we so can come up with. this is the first time we've seen the figures on mm -hmm. yes. Correct. Yeah, remember those things that look like a movie theater entrance? Yeah, that was the one. That's the one. Maybe a movie theater entrance. <laughs> 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 Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next item is open agenda. Well, do we need a no, motion to, it, to reject? It, information. No. No. Information. Okay, no, next item is open agenda. And, um, so we again read the bylaws and I just want y'all's opinion if it's something you feel we need to do. I have no problem with public comments, but section 4.9 allows for 10 minutes of public comments at our meeting and don't most other entities offer three? Three minutes, that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, I think it allows uh, 10 minutes per agenda item, so I I know we have not had many public comments, but in theory, someone 
Yeah. 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 I think at our board meetings it's three, three, three minutes. minutes per person with three persons per item. Maximum, exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's nine minutes on one item. Yeah. So is that something that you think we should look into maybe addressing? Well, let, let me see. It says no presentation shall exceed three minutes per any side of an issue. No? Nor shall the time per subject exceed ten minutes. So what does that mean? Maybe I don't understand it properly. The presentation shall exceed three persons for any side of any issue, and more shall the time per subject exceed ten minutes. minutes. So it basically limits you to about three point five. So it's yeah. about the same, about the same so, thing. So we're it's about okay. the same thing. Yeah. So I just misunderstood. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Okay. That's so fine. we're okay. Yeah. I just wanted it's to make okay. sure that I hadn't misunderstood anything. It's basically three minutes per yeah. individual, maximum of three. But the only issue here with the way it's worded is if it's one person, they can have, they ten, can have ten, 10 minutes. minutes. You know, so maybe we could, that's fine? Okay. It's fine with you all, or do you want to just, if it's one person, not have all 10 minutes? Just something we came across. Yeah, it's something we need to discuss at Osmo. Mr. Well, used, used to deal with it so I, much. I don't think that that's going to be a big issue for us. No, I know. Because, I, just, I mean, but I'm thinking whether for you later. limit them to three minutes or you give one speaker the whole 10 minutes, it's... I'm you know. just thinking for later in case none of us are here. <laughs> no, okay, I, I don't think this is going to be an okay. issue because it limits it to 10 minutes, period, and it's a maximum of three people, so it's not going to be okay. a continuous per item more than 10 minutes. Okay. I mean, and I don't think you're going to get every item Okay, guys, challenged. that's just me being me. <laughs> okay, the date for the next committee meeting? Well, the first Monday in May is... May 1? May 4th. May 4th. But, but we were thinking that only gives us like three weeks between this meeting and, and the next meeting. So I would like to recommend maybe be May the 11th, if that's okay with the committee members. Yeah. It gives us a, a full okay four weeks. Me. That sounds fine. That sounds fine. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Obviously, nobody signed up for public comments. Thank you. Now they have 10 minutes. <laughs> now they have 10 minutes, they might. <laughs> if there's no further business, if there's no further business, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>